Welcome back everybody, it's another week and we've got some more news for you. It is March the 3rd, it came out yesterday, so StarMade Vision 0.18999, some serious optimizations and balance changes. So, welcome back, it's another episode of StarMade News with Mushroom Fleet. Now, this is official news, this is in the dev, you can go and check it out now. There we have a tutorial out on how to change to the dev launcher. Now first screen this is the contents of your star made data folder okay now the star made data folder contains a folder called config right you should be able to see what I'm doing config contains as you know block behavior config which contains every single block in the game and all the values sorry that's block config Block behavior config contains all the weapons, all the power settings, all the thrust limits, everything else, all the values that make the engine tick, or everything that's been exposed. And we've got a new one. Now, I'm in the wrong folder, so you can't see it. So I'm going to head over to the 019 dev data folder, go into config. We've got a new folder, we've got a new, we've got a new XML called game config default. Now, game config default is going to be a big thing for servers, um, the ones that actively customize their stuff anyway. So, if I just quickly show you that, here it is. This is the game config uh, default.xml. As you can see, finally the starter gear has been exposed. So, you've got starter credits and hotbar slots and inventory slots that you actually spawn with so that means that you'll be able to uh, customize what players get when they first log into a server and it doesn't stop there so far this is all we can show you at the moment so there's the helmet and the logbook so I'm hoping to be able to give people a logbook when they spawn now just down here is something at the bottom now you can't see it let's just okay uncomment and edit the following to give the player a blueprint at the start so you take out the hats the brackets exclamation mark dash dash take out those and then you'll see into this one here and this one here and then it will say blueprint name it says isn't type 0 C um, it's interesting and then we go filled so let's just go through these real quick so this is posted by schema like I say 23 hours ago okay hello players this update is something very special while we are working on a lot of new features we took the time to take an in-depth look at several systems mainly the graphics and the network code a lot of this game's choices in terms of style and design have been made to make the game as big and scalable as possible. This is the whole reason we stayed with the block only system as opposed to detailed polygon graphics, as blocks present a unique set of optimizations and designs that would be lost in a conventional level of detailed polygon system. To tell the, diff to tell the results up front, we managed to increase the performance of both graphics and network immensely. In numbers, this means almost doubled frame rate dependent on hardware and a decreased average network traffic of 10% what it previously was profiled on stress tests on server. These kind of improvements are some of the most technical ones to be made for any program. A vast amount of hours went into analyzing and profiling while in other areas like the network even required to write additional modules to make analyzation even possible. A big thank to servers who gave us profiling information, as well as the tester team and players creating stress tests to verify and improve the changes. For anyone interested, there is a more technical explanation of methods used and designs on the end of this post. So that is, um, that is, that, I think that's a pretty big planet. Wait a minute. Before and after optimization, same planet, same settings. So it's gone from 48 frames to 102 frames. That's what I'm reading on these images here. Also, there's a bunch of other stuff in terms of uh, memory and things like that. Anyway, so check that image out. It's in the news on star-made.org or star-made-doc. Okay, 
But while we still have a lot more features in queue to come very soon, there's also some additional little features added to this version. Custom starter gear, which I explained just, just now, and servers are now able to define their starter gear. This includes credits, blocks, meta items, and blueprints filled or not. So to edit them, first start game config.xml. It'll appear in the base directory after you start the game for the first time. It's pretty easy to edit. So we've got some new blocks, force field doors. This new door type added by Kupu adds wonderful looking new doors. We've got them in red, yellow, blue. Oh wow, and they're different patterns as well. That is immense. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at those in a future video. Uh, faction permission changes, a lot more roles, uh, sorry, uh, options for customization has been added to faction roles. There are now permissions to control relationship changes, declare war, personal en enemies, etc. Faction news posting, taking, abandoning a home base, and territory claiming or clearing. If you're a faction leader, be sure to check and adapt your roles accordingly. Balance changes. Calbiri, Landcake, as well as the tester team, modified and gave feedback on a whole bunch of balance changes. Hull blocks have now been buffed in order to improve survivability of ships. Normal hull has 75 hit points. Standard armor has 60 armor and 100 hit points, bringing it to 250 effective hit points. Advanced armor now has 75 armor and 250 hit points, bringing it to 1000 effective hit points. Power supply beams have been buffed to bring it back to near, near pre-rework levels. They're slightly less effective compared to what they used to be, but still offer around 5 to 6 times more power, gen, power regen than their onboard equivalent in pure power regen blocks. The power supply per tick is, has gone from 40 to 240, and power consumption per tick has gone from 50 to 270. <laughs> The piercing defensive effect cap has been decreased, but the amount of blocks you need to achieve max percentage has been decreased. This means uh, this will mean this will bring the max of achievable EHP to 2,500, with uh, so 2,500 effective hit points per advanced on defensive piercing effect. That's interesting. Um, shield capacitors now have two times more shield HP. This makes fights last longer and increase the chance of surviving high alpha damage. Regen rate has remained unchanged. Shield capacity uh, total mul multiplier has gone from 55 to 110. Uh, warheads, so that's double basically. <laughs> yeah, double. Warheads disintegrators have doubled block damage. Uh, missile and pulse combination, the radius has been nerfed to 48, with explosive you can get 58. Uh, slightly faster, so it's been nerfed from 4 to 3, and then does more damage, buff 1 to 2. Okay, so there's changes to missile pulse, which is your Hulk missiles. Um, the missile and beam combination, slower, so anti-missile turrets have less chance of missing. So hopefully missile with so long range missiles, anti-missile missiles <laughs> should work. That's interesting. Other changes, ingots and crystals are two times cheaper to make it easier to, easier to craft advanced and crystal armor. Shield cap and recharges are two times cheaper and HP of the more expensive systems, mainly weapons and support tools has been increased by a factor of two to three. So that's really going to be nice when you're making your advanced armors and your shield modules they're going to be twice the half the sh half the crafting requirement gameplay changes punch through damage system now has effective penetration depth of around seven blocks it used to make other hull damage effects more or less obsolete and is in large groups game breaking it's now equal to piercing an explosive in terms of block destruction per hit the piercing effect blocks are switched over to the punch through system with its double damage for blocks it would be ideal to use this system to destroy heavily armored ships this is also great for low weapon damage so low damage weapons but with the drawback of doing no to low shield damage depending on effect ratio <clears throat> the punch through effect blocks use the piercing damage system so they switched it over it's going to be a bit confusing getting used to that um, making it capable of damaging blocks below armor without really destroying the armor itself first. 
It did lose its armor efficiency bonus though, so if you want to destroy armor, piercing is the way to go. It doesn't have a shield debuff though. Explosive has not changed. It doesn't exactly penetrate, but it can damage a wide surface area with a minimum of weapon groups. To clear things up, these are the three hull damage types, not blocks. Piercing damage system, damage applied on a block gets halved and goes on to the next block. This will automatically lead to a soft cap at seven blocks deep. This also makes it able to destroy or damage blocks below armor plates without destroying that first. So it damages internally. Uh, punch through damage system, damage applied on a block gets deducted with that block's EHP and then halved as it passes to the next block. This also has a soft cap at around seven blocks. And the explosive damage system, one sixth of damage gets applied to all touching blocks. Unfortunately, these changes do require an overhaul in ship design. Because of the stronger shields and more durable hull, it would be recommended to put more armor and weapon blocks on your ships and sacrifice some, sh some shields. Any constructive feedback is appreciated. And then we go into the bugs. So those bugs done. Uh, all prices have been adjusted to their 1.5 to 3 times higher than their dynamic price. Okay. Uh, then there is a very technical expl explanation of the, fr of the uh, graphics optimizations, but I'm not going to go into that. You can go and check that out over on the news post. And the network as well, which is very interesting. Okay. Right. So that's pretty much all the news I've got for you right now. Uh, what comes next? As said, a lot of features are in queue. Foremost, the rail system and the advanced chat, maybe even with IRC interface. So there you go. So uh, that's pretty much all the news I've got for you. So thanks for watching and uh, have fun and fly safe. See you next time.